On this episode, we're going to find out if you are a crappy real estate agent. There's actually 12 signs to see if you're a bad agent or not. Let's go through those right now. What is up, guys? Welcome to episode 280 of the Massive Agent Podcast. I am your host, Dustin Brome, and today I went, so I went to Google, all right? I'm like, what makes a bad real estate agent? And I found a great article from Homelight, uh, the 12 signs that you have a bad real estate agent and what you can do about it. So this article is actually for consumers, but I took these 12 signs of a bad agent and we're going to break them down. Now, we could, we, there's so many different ways we could do this. There's the 12 signs that you could be a bad agent. There's 12 ways to make sure you're being a good agent by just doing the opposite of these, right? Uh, but I'm not going to elaborate on all 12 of these, but there's three or four that I'm really going to dive deep on because they are massively important. Most of this is common sense, but some of these, some of these things on the list apparently aren't common sense to a lot of agents. So, uh, be prepared. You may have your toes stepped on a little bit here, but if there's anything that you hear today, don't just get all pissed off and offended and you know blah, 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 because first off, that's what losers do. Second of all, when you react that way, then you completely eliminate any chance that you can learn and improve. When If you get upset and you're like, oh, just screw this, because of something you hear today, you have no chance of improving. It probably means you're a shitty agent. So... You guys with open minds, you guys that are always striving to do better, always striving to improve as a realtor, this is the episode for you. And anyone with sensitive feelings, it sucks for you. This, uh, this may, might not be your favorite episode. But thank God you're learning this stuff now about yourself. This is an episode where you need to look in the mirror. This, this requires some self-awareness. This requires some honesty, some intellectual honesty. And uh, as long as you can do that, you're going to... This episode will make you a better agent because you're going to see maybe where some of your weaknesses are and what you need to be focused on. So uh, before we jump into that, welcome to this episode, guys. Uh, what are we at? 280. That's crazy. Episode 300 is coming up. I should probably plan something for episode 300. Haven't yet. 20 weeks to go. Uh, we'll figure something out. But damn, that, that's, that's a lot. I appreciate each and every one of you for listening to the show. Everyone who's left us a review. If you haven't yet, very easy to do, massiveagentpodcast.com slash review. You can even do it on Spotify now as well. Uh, we appreciate Spotify reviews. But you guys, the reason why I keep coming back every single week is because of you and because I hear from you. You send me a DM on Instagram, a YouTube comment on one of our YouTube videos over on the Massive Agent channel. If I was just speaking into the abyss and I'd never heard from anyone... This would, I don't know if I'd still be doing it. So thank you for keeping me going. I do this for you, and it's been fun. So let's uh, let's jump into it. Uh, be before we get started, I have to give a shout out to one of my favorite service providers and vendors in the industry, Keeping Current Matters. They KCM, they do all the hard work. Like it, every single one of you probably makes an effort to stay up on what's happening with with interest rates, with the economy, with the housing market, and all of that, right? All the macroeconomic trends and the political bullshit. You, you try to stay up on that stuff. Hopefully, you don't try too hard because you can be inundated and then you never get any work done and it's constant negativity. So uh, I actually don't watch the news, like, at all. Uh, I still see it because it's on social media, but I avoid it like the plague and just keep my head down and, and, and get busy because... Someone that I look up to a long time ago, someone very wealthy said, you don't need to watch the news. You don't need to listen to talk radio. You don't need to do all this stuff every single day because it's, it's destroying your mindset. And he said, if it gets bad enough, they'll come tell you <laughs> like if, if, if whatever it is, is important enough, you'll fricking hear about it. So take that for what it's worth. There's a little rant. Hopefully you're not totally inundated with all this stuff, but um, so if you have unplugged from the news and all that, good. There's 
keeping current matters. That's their job. They just stay on top of literally everything. They decipher the news. They decipher market updates. They decipher what's happening. And then they just give it to you, members of Keeping Current Matters. Not just here's what it means, but here's how to communicate this to your clients. So if you want to really truly become an advisor and know how to communicate what's happening and what's going to happen in the housing market and with real estate, you need Keeping Current Matters. You can try it out for free today at trykcm.com slash BAM. So for this week's episode, I got a little lazy. I went to Google and I said, what are agents bad at? And I was curious, like, I, I was just, I don't know why I thought of this, but what are agents bad at? And I came across this, this article by Homelight, and I'll link to it in the show notes. Uh, and if you're watching on the, our YouTube channel, it's in the, the YouTube description. 12 signs that you're a bad real estate agent. Right now, this article is actually for consumers to identify if they have hired a shitty agent and if they did, what can they do about it? So, but I'm going to focus on, uh, on these 12 things because this is really a roadmap to decide if you're a good agent or not. Most of us, most of us, if we're being honest, we do, we do some of them well, and some of them are kind of weaknesses. That's, I think that's fairly normal, but you need to know about the weaknesses. I'm going to go through the 12 and then I'm going to highlight a few of them uh, in, I'll, at the end, but l let's go through all 12. So according to this home light article, according to the interwebs, a bad real estate agent, number one, drops the ball on communication. Number two, does real estate as a side gig, part-time agents. Number three, has their own agenda and gets pushy about it. We're going to talk about that one. Number four, unfamiliar with the market. Yeah. Uh, hard to be a great agent if you don't know what the hell is going on in your market. Number five, runs late or is a no-show to appointments. Yeah, pretty common sense. You're a shitty agent if you don't show up to the appointments you set. Number six, not a great negotiator. Number seven, lacks marketing skills. You better believe we're going to talk about that one. Number eight, acts dishonestly or unethically. Interesting. Number nine, is over eager to please. That's super interesting. Number 10, acts as a messenger rather than guiding you through the process. Damn right, we're going to talk about that one. Number 11, doesn't ask any questions. I'd agree. That's, that's, you're shitty if you don't ask any questions. How are you supposed to know how to help them if you don't ask them questions about what it is they need help with or what they're trying to accomplish? No brainer, but it's amazing how many agents do all the talking and don't ask any fucking questions. And number 12, fails to get the results for your home, right? If you can't get the job done in the eyes of the consumer, you're a bad agent. Uh, I don't even think that's unfair. Do you? I mean, we're being honest here today, right? Like we're being adults here. We're being honest. We're able to think critically about where we as agents may, uh, may fall short. We have to do that so we can fill in those gaps and not fall short anymore in these areas. We have to be aware of where we are falling short. So those are the 12 things. Let's go to number three, okay? A bad agent has their own agenda and is pushy about it. I completely a thousand percent agree. This is why, uh, now I've learned this from experience. This is why you must be financially sound. You must have a firm financial footing. You must have a thriving business. You must have investments out there that are bringing money in outside of commission. You need to have multiple streams of income. You have to be in great financial shape to be the best agent. Here's why I say that. If you need a paycheck very badly, if you need a closing so you can pay your bills for the month, you just at some level subconsciously will be a little more pushy, a little more needy with that client, with that offer, with that house than you would otherwise. Okay, I know what that's like because in the beginning of my career, when I needed a closing, even though consciously I wasn't trying to guide them into doing anything wrong, I wasn't trying to guide them into buying a shithole, but maybe I was, I certainly didn't approach it like, hey, if you guys, if this house doesn't meet, if it doesn't check every box, fuck it, let's go on to the next one. I didn't approach it like that. I tried to like, hey, well, are you really going to find is the next house really going to be perfect? You know, does this one check most of the boxes? Do you see yourself living here? That kind of thing. And in hindsight, if I was in a better financial position, 
where I literally, it didn't matter to me. It didn't affect me negatively whether they bought that house now or in six months or ever. I would have given much more objective advice, right? Much more um, advice that was just not needy. You can disagree all you want. Okay, I'm, This will probably be clipped on social media. Uh, you can disagree if you want. But I promise you, if you're being honest, if you need a closing, you're being more pushy than you otherwise would be. So you have to get your shit in order. You have to get your house in order. You have to get your finances in order. There's this, There's just no choice. I don't know how else to say it. Yes, you can be, you can still do a great job. You can still uh, help clients sell homes. You could help your clients buy homes. You can still help them meet their goals and all that. And I did at those times too. But I know that there were times I was a little bit more needy, a little bit more pushy than I, than I should have been because I needed the commission check. Are you in that situation? And if so, the solution is hire a coach, take a course, join a team, do something, uh, start actually putting some freaking money into ads. Something that we do within my coaching group, the Massive Agent Society, is we help you see how much a closing costs. How much are you spending on marketing? And then how much does that lead to in commission? I mean, we, we find out that for every, for example, every time you spend $2,000 on average, in marketing ads and, and whatnot, you're making $9,000 in commission. You have to know that stuff first. We have a spreadsheet, a, a, a success tracker, we call it within the society that you just plug some numbers into and it calculates it for you. And it's like, here's how much you're spending on marketing. And here's how much a closing is worth to you. And here's how much you make for every dollar you spend on marketing. Pretty helpful. Pretty helpful to know that for every dollar you spend, you're going to make $3. You need to know this stuff. So Take responsibility for where you're at. Maybe you need to set your goals higher. You need to work on your confidence. You need to work on your mindset. It's probably all of the above, if we're being honest. But you have to take control and get your finances in order. You have to make a shitload of money and build a business. If you want to be completely objective to where you don't need the closing at all. You may like that advice. You may not. That may trigger you. You may think I'm an asshole or I'm insensitive. Whatever. I don't give a fuck. It's true. It's real. It's honest. Because I was that needy agent, even though I didn't mislead anyone, I was a little bit more pushy and needy than I could have been or should have been. Just the facts. Let's go on to number seven. Number seven on this list lacks marketing skills. Yeah, um, kind of hard to be a great agent if you have no idea how to get the seller a shitload of eyeballs on their property. This is what drives me nuts too. Agents that do a shitty job marketing their own brand your own business, you, your Instagram is nothing but Canva quotes or just listed, just sold graphics. There's no personality, no videos that, that bring value or educate at all. It's just crap. And then you show up at, the, at a seller's kitchen table and say, I'm a marketing expert. I'm going to get you more exposure, more eyeballs for your house than anyone else. Bullshit. They know it. All they have to do is go to your Instagram. All they have to do is Google you. And they're like, this person doesn't even show up. This person doesn't even... If they Google you and all they find is, is that profile page on your brokerage's website, that's not your website. It's a profile page on your brokerage's site. It's like, here's our agents, you know, or meet the team or whatever. That's all they see. And they don't see shit else. They don't see content. They don't see YouTube videos. They don't see articles you've written. They don't see educational videos on Instagram or TikTok. They know you're full of shit. They're like, you're not... <laughs> You you can't even market your own brand. You can't even market for your own business. How are you going to do that for our house? You have to take marketing seriously. Marketing is everything. The best marketer wins, not the best agent. The best marketer wins. The best known agent wins. Yes, you have to do a great job, obviously. And we're talking about how you can do better at that job. But the best marketer wins. This is why we focus about 50% of the time on marketing efforts within the Massive Agent Society. The other half is all mindset. It's what's going on between your head. It's the expectations you have of yourself. If you want to make a million dollars a year, yet you're stoked as hell to make 70, and then you take your foot off the gas as soon as, soon as you hit 70, you're done. You're never going to hit a million. You're never going to hit 100,000. Maybe fluke for a year, but you're just going to go right back down to your average 
where your financial thermostat is set. If you guys have ever read Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, you know about the financial thermostat. I think we talked about that on a recent episode. Get this book. Yeah, it's on my desk. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. It's on the Massive Agent book list. Massiveagentpodcast.com slash book list. Just an Amazon list of all the books I recommend. Go get that. But you've got to work on your mindset just as much as you work on your marketing. But if you, be, you become a master in both, oh my God. But your clients know if you lack marketing skills. If they list with you and you've made big promises and then they're not getting any showings or they're like, how come I'm not showing up on this website and how come I'm, there's no this and like, aren't you going to do a, a video to promote the listing? Or, and then you don't do any of that shit. You just put a, a sign in the yard. They know you're a clown. They know you lack marketing skills. So I f- completely agree with number seven here. A bad agent lacks marketing skills. Yes. Take responsibility for your damn self. I don't care who you are. We can all get better at marketing, myself included. I just spent the last weekend at a mastermind with some extremely wealthy, high, high level entrepreneurs and business owners learning how I can do better, how I can do more. Okay. If you feel like your marketing is just great and you're coasting, you've already fucked up. You can always get better. You can always go to another level. You can always reach more people, be seen in more places. Now you have to start at the beginning too. If you're in the beginning, you need to start being seen in places. You have to start, right? Make sure that you have some serious marketing chops. So a bad agent lacks marketing skills. A great agent has great marketing skills. This, This is just a list of like a great agent doesn't do these things, right? Uh, let's do number 10. Number 10 is acts a bad agent acts as a messenger rather than guiding you through the process. One thing that I learned pretty early on in my career, and I don't know why, but for me, it was natural. Uh, I, I noticed I was getting a lot of questions and then I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm, these questions are all the same. I'm doing a shit job because I should just be, you know, coming out in front and proactively letting people know what to expect. So then they don't even have these questions. If people are, if people have to ask you certain questions, I don't mean all questions. There's no way that you're going to uh, eliminate the need for any question ever. That's not what I'm saying. Obviously, you're going to get a shitload of questions from your clients. But the ones that keep popping up, if they don't understand the next steps, then you're a messenger. You're just like, you're not even, it, what they would think, and I, as justified, they would think that you don't care enough to let them know what to expect, right? So if in the beginning, hopefully you're future pacing and you're saying, here's what to expect. Once you make an offer, then we're going to do this. We're going to order the inspection. We're going to order the appraisal. The lender's going to get to work here and they're going to need a couple things from you. And then it's, it, you, you know, after this much time, this should happen. You know, you should be doing that in the very beginning before they even make an offer, right? And then do it again. Once they make an offer, let them know what to expect next because the worst thing ever I know because I've bought my own house and I've uh, a couple times and sold my own house before I know how shitty it is when you uh, for me it was a mortgage lender that didn't let me know what what was coming up next they didn't give me any expectations for timeline or and I'm like so they just they could very easily have just set expectations from, from the beginning so remember Don't just tell them what's happening at the moment and leave it at that. Guide them through the process. Let them know what to anticipate next. And then after that, and then after that. Some of the best agents on the planet are the best at future pacing and setting expectations and educating people on what comes next. Because when you, when they, when your buyers or sellers know what comes next, they're much less stressed out because they're anticipating what's coming up. But the, Un, the unknown creates a shitload of stress, right? When you don't know what's happening, when you feel you don't feel empowered, that is a bad experience. Be proactive and guide people through the process. Okay, number 11, a bad agent doesn't ask you any questions. I a thousand percent agree. Most agents just like to talk. In the beginning of my career, the first four or five years, I talked a lot. Now I asked some questions, but I've learned to ask more questions than to speak because when you ask questions and let them talk, you get at what's actually 
their goal, what's actually fueling their, their want to buy this house, what's fueling their desire to get into real estate investment. If you're working with someone and they're buying their first rental property, have you ever considered to ask why they want a rental property? Have you ever thought about that? If not, there's a sign you can do better, right? Why do they want a rent- rental property? Well, because of the cash flow and you know this and that, and we want to put our money to work for us. Cool. Why is that? Once your money is going to work for you, what will that allow you to do? When you ask great questions, you get at the motivations, and then you can serve those people and really help them. Because if you think that their goal is just to buy the house, you're wrong. Why do they want to buy the house? Do they want to put their kids into a better neighborhood? Do they want to be in a better environment with better neighbors? right? Do they need more space because they plan on uh, growing a family? Maybe the opposite. Maybe their, their kids have moved out and they're downsizing. They're relocating for a job because the last job sucked because of A, B, and C, and now they're moving over here to start their own business in this field. You have to ask questions for the love of God. Stop talking so goddamn much and ask questions. A great agent asks questions. A bad agent doesn't ask questions. I'm going to, I'm going to, before we wrap this thing up, I'm going to go over these 12 one more time. Uh, but I hope you are reflecting on this. I hope you're really being honest about where you are falling short because every single one of you is falling short somewhere, myself included. I told you, I just spent the weekend at a mastermind. That's not, it's not inexpensive to do this mastermind is not inexpensive to get in the room with people that are worth hundreds of and hundreds of millions of dollars. There's a couple billionaires in that room, hundreds of millions of dollars, lots of, you know, uh, eight figure a year earners with different businesses, founders of companies, uh, just incredible group to find out how are they, what are they using with their marketing? How are they attracting clients? How are they, uh, managing, hiring people? How are they growing their business? Cause I want to improve on all that too. Let's blow through the 12, right? According to home light, 12 signs of a bad real estate agent. Number one, drops the ball on communication. Number two, does real estate as a side gig. Number three, has their own agenda and gets pushy about it. Number four, unfamiliar with the market. No shit. Number five, runs late or is a no-show for appointments. No shit. Number six, not a great negotiator. Number seven, lacks marketing skills. Number eight, acts dishonestly or unethically. Number nine, is eager to overplease. Don't overdo it. Number 10, acts as a messenger rather than guiding you through the process. Number 11, doesn't ask you any questions. Number 12, fails to get results for your home. Hopefully this episode will help you move forward for the rest of 2023 and beyond and fill in those gaps. Improve the weaknesses. There's always something you can improve on. And But if you don't recognize those, that's a form of arrogance. The best agents are always looking at what their shortcomings are and they try to figure out how to improve. If you do that, you will start making more money. You will be better serving your clients, which will lead to more referrals, which will lead to more closings, which will lead to more money, all of the above, fulfillment in your career, happiness when you're actually you know, making ends meet and thriving, and you can build up a surplus, things are good. Let's get you there, fill in the gaps. If, if, if this episode resonated with you, please share it with someone in our industry who needs to hear it. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back next week with another episode. Take care.